Hello and welcome to Travels with Jordy. This week I finally get around to finishing the helm console. It's going to be lots of sawdust, it's going to be a mess, should be some nice cabinetry. Hope so. And if this is your first visit to Travels with Jordy, please feel welcome. My name is Peter and I live aboard this classical wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia along with my pup Jordy. All the while I'm fixing it up to do some pretty major cruising someday and if that's the sort of thing you might be interested in please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons whom without I couldn't possibly do this every week. I'm so grateful to you all and if one of you out there would like to also become a patron there's links down below. I really really appreciate it. It helps a lot. Also want to mention this coming Sunday December the 20th Second, I'm going to do my very first live stream. Gosh knows how that'll go. It'll be a question and answer of some sort at uh, 4 o'clock Pacific time. So set your calendars and tune in. Hopefully we'll have some fun. Let's get on with it. All right, then. Next up is building the bottom of the helm console, um, which is going to be actually a storage cabinet that is going to open up in this direction. And I'll show you about all how that's all going to work shortly. But um, if... Those of you who watched me install the actual helm assembly, I put a big block against the bulkhead and it's really too big. So I'm going to take this apart temporarily and reduce the size of that a little bit uh, because it's plenty strong. In fact, it's way stronger than it needs to be. This is a very easy remove because it's not installed yet. So here goes these bloody big blocks that I'm mentioning, and yeah, super robust, I love them, but um, I have two problems. One, right here I have a tachometer that's going to sit down a little lower than that, so I'm just going to trim that back down to there, and the bottom, I have a cabinet that wants to come in here, and there's no way I need this to be this beefy. chopping up this serious support block for the steering assembly. Now, uh, part of me loathes to do it because I love this seriously robust thing, but you know, it's only as strong as the bolts that hold it to the bulkhead, and the bulkhead is three quarter inch ply. And actually, it's the flexing of the bulkhead that I'm more concerned about than the robustness of this block. So what I'm going to do actually is trim this down a little bit, and then I'm going to laminate another sheet of three quarter inch plywood to the back of this much much longer so it'll stiffen up the bulkhead in general and I think that'll actually make a stronger overall support than this beast was although this is all sapelli mahogany I hate to kind of cut it up but anyway that's what we're doing and it begins with chopping this thing up which requires safety goggles this is going to be an evil cut Well, that's not pretty, uh, but I can clean that up a little bit, no problem. Okay, so let's cut the other side. <laughs> I think I'll start upside down. back this with a piece of plywood but I have this actually perfectly sized piece of mahogany it's ridiculously expensive but this will make a very very strong um, uh, support for the bulkhead so that's what I'm gonna do yeah so glue screw put it back on we got lots to do Seems a little much to put a chamfer back on this, but I'm trying to make it pretty again. <laughs> and likewise.
I just love how easy and simple it is to tidy up a piece of wood with a chamfer. Okay, so that goes on there. And uh, a little glue, some screws, and we're in good shape. There we go. Now, these four screws are really just to hold it while it's gluing because, of course, there will be three big bolts that come all the way through the bulkhead when this is finally installed. Um, but it does hold it together while I'm assembling it. And, again, um, just enough screws to assemble it, but the bulk of the screws will come through the plywood into the mahogany because screws hold much better in hardwood than they do in the plywood. Okay, it's time to put this back on. Oh. Splendid! Okay, so what I have in mind is if this is the existing helm console I've already built and the hole for this steering wheel below that I'm going to build a um, base of the cabinet and that's just going to be built out of a railing style uh, much like a door uh, with a little center uh, style as well and uh, this will be plywood and these will be solid mahogany and that will basically be completely solid and permanent even though it's a cabinet the cabinet access will be from the side so if I draw it from the top if this is the bulkhead and here's our helm with our steering wheel um, what I've just talked about will be down below here but all of this area under here will be a cabinet that can open out sideways now, as I said, because uh, I want to be able to get into this cabinet easily with the wheel here and perhaps uh, operating the vessel, there's not really a possibility of a door here. So what will happen, this side of the panel will roll out two feet. Um, of course, the companionway will have to be closed for that to happen. And it will expose shelves that are on the front face of this block of cabinetry that will come out of here. And all of this will roll on a set of really heavy duty soft glide closers, uh, well, drawer guides actually. And these will actually only be used to guide it. The actual weight of the cabinet will be taken up by casters riding on the sole. Now, that's all a bit iffy right now because the sole is in really rough shape. So I know that when I rebuild the sole, this may get need to be modified a little bit. It's an idea, it's something I've been mulling over. I think it's going to work out well. I'm actually going to do the same thing on the other side eventually, uh, but I can't do that yet because it would shorten the wheelhouse to less than eight feet and it's pretty hard to handle wood in here. So that has to be done pretty late in the overall project. Okay, normally when making rail and style, if I, I mean, if I just draw the cabinet really rough up here, with its various components. Um, if you look at the corner here, which looks like this, there's the rail and here's the style vertically, and somewhere inside will be the plywood panel. Well, if I do a cross section through here, this would normally look like this. And there would be the panel inside, and this is plywood. Now, that's pretty common and that's normally the way I do this, but I want this to be really, really stout, strong. So I'm going to use half inch plywood and one inch um, solid uh, timber for the frames. So I'm going to actually make it like this. So the plywood is half inch and then I'm going to just date about the back half of the um, frame and that way I can make the panel almost as big like right to the bottom and put some big heavy screws in here and make sure that that's super solid plus glue. I'm only ever going to see it from the front but this will make it a much stronger connection and the inside will be flush and I've maximized out the strength which is what I need to be able to put the track on and stuff like that. Anyway, let's uh, get to it. Okay. piece is for the top and bottom of the door. It's so bloody dark this time of year I need to use the 
Um, headlamp to be able to read the tape measure in some places. Okay, let's get cutting. Okay, so I've made one cut on all the pieces of wood. I've reset the blade to make the other cut to take this corner out. And I've marked every time so that I don't make a mess here. I don't know if you guys can see anything, but I'm getting to the point where I can't see very well at all, which is a little hairy when running a table saw. Well folks, I'm going to call it a day. We have a storm blowing in and it's starting to rock the boat quite violently and uh, getting super dark. Well, just pick it up again tomorrow. Cheers! Well, it's another incredibly dark and dreary day, so I've invested in another overhead uh, LED fluorescent style light. Some of you will remember the one I cooked last year while running the table saw off the auxiliary plug on it. <laughs> Embarrassing. Anyway, somehow I thought I could get by without it, but these Victoria winter days, uh, this is the middle of the day. It's just dark, and of course the day ends at 4 o'clock, so if you're going to get anything done, you need tons of light. Let's get on with it. Alright, and there we go. Much, much better. Let's get changed, get some stuff going on here. Alright then, so I... This is going to get old. Ah, okay. Have all the various components required to make the frames of the doors. Uh, basically, the... I say doors, panels. Um, they're going to go like uh, this and the plywood will sit inside. Now you're saying, of course, that there is an extension to the um, rabbit I put on these vertical pieces, and that doesn't matter at all because that's completely hidden on the inside of the cabinet. It's uh, simplified jointry. It'll be very strong, very robust. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it together with Craig screws. Um, I'm sure I've showed you this before. I'm just gonna take everything apart here and uh, get set up for that. Alright then, I'm pretty sure I've showed most of you about uh, Craig screws, but if you haven't, this is a Craig pocket screw kit, and what it does, it drills a hole on an angle. You can see this drill bit will come down in here and drill that hole on that angle, and if you can see I'm holding the camera properly, it's a square-shouldered two-part bit that drills a clearance for the shank and then a clearance for the head. And it goes in this jig, which has a bunch of adjustments. And you can see as it travels down diagonally through the wood, it'll drill that hole on that angle. Okay, so what I've opted to do here is um, clamp them down to my piece of plywood with a block here to support it to make sure that the face of it is really flat. And uh, I think that'll work out really well. Uh, these are these beautiful stainless steel Craig screws that were gifted to me off the Amazon wish list. Thank you ever so much. And... Um, I actually have somewhere a really long Robertson bit to drive this with a screw gun, but I can't put my hand on it right now. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. All right, let's see what that looks like. Absolutely, it's like it was proper jointry. Now, I want to say something quick. <laughs> I get a lot of really kind comments um, about doing really nice cabinetry. Now, I think I can make a cabinet or something look relatively nice, but you know, work like this is definitely not fine cabinetry. It's a reasonable solution for what I need to do, but it is by no means fine cabinetry. Okay, let's do some more of this slightly less than fine cabinetry. Now you might say, why aren't I setting this up with a square? And I'll tell you why, because I'd rather that the wood just meets absolutely tight all the way, then it's perfectly square because I can square it up later if it's not. Better that it's a really tight joint. There we go. What am I missing, folks? I'm missing glue. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, I got a little excited, got a little ahead of myself. A little glue will fix this up nicely. Don't need much. And it really doesn't matter, especially with this Type On 3. It's very forgiving. If it scooches out all over the place, I can easily clean it up. Oh, yeah!
there we go. One frame, ready to go. Loving it. Um, we'll let that set up a little bit, and uh, while well, I make the other one, and then we'll cut some plywood panels to put in. Woohoo! And there we go. Both frames made. Oh yeah, yeah. I like it. 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 Now let's see how flat it is. Time to rip some plywood, and this won't be much fun. Okay, so this is always fun. Um, Flapping around plywood inside the boat. And uh, I can tell you, this isn't light. So, the middle sheet is my half inch. Up, 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 gotta get to the balance point. Oh, on my elbows. There we go. Push that other sheet back. And this one up on to the bins. Holy mackerel, when these things are flat, they're suddenly a lot bigger. Okay, um, I gotta take a 32 inch, roughly 32 inch strip out of this. And then what I do is I take my circular saw, and really, I should memorize a number. I think I have once, but it's exactly what the offset is. Inch and a half! I thought it was inch and a half. Okay, then I'm going to take my handy dandy clamp and clamp it at this end. An inch and a half. The other thing I need to do is make sure that all the balancing on all the bins below is going to work out. This is a bit precarious. Okay, let's just do it, right? There we go. Now, I don't know if you can see yet, but uh, quite a bit of tear out. Even though this is a very, very nice blade. I mean, it's going to be okay, but note to self. Uh, this stuff does rip, cross-cut rip with a lot of tear out. Now, I can still use the other side, which I'm sure will be a lot better because the blade was cutting up through. But uh, still, that is uh, something to keep in mind. Okay. Too much stuff. Okay, so here's our sheet. Um, here you can see all the tear out that I got with the, uh, the blade pulling up through. Um, again, that would be less than the inch of overhang I have on the frames, so it would be okay. However, the other side of the sheet is actually nicer anyway, and of course it doesn't have any tear out. Um, the grain seems a bit light, but I'm, I'm not going to stress about that. I just have to just keep moving. So, I'm going to continue to cut. Um, with the rough side up, and that way the other side will be continuously preserved. So, this gets cut into two pieces to go into my two panels. A quarter. Excellent. Straight edge. excited about um, the glue up here. I just want to do a little bit of sanding on the inside edge here just because it'd be hard to get in there after. I won't ease the inside edge at all because it'd be nice for that to be really crisp against the panel. However, I'll ease the outside edge a little bit and I should do that now because if I'm going to sand in here afterwards, the risk of touching the panel with the corner of the sanding block is a bit much. Actually, to tell you the truth, I think I'll do the bulk of this sanding now, just to make it a little bit easier. Which means, the sander. When I ease the inside of a corner like this, of an edge of a panel, I actually like that I can't sand very well to the corners. I like the, the, the texture of it being a little bit eased, but as you get to the corners, it being a little bit crisper. It sort of feels like it just wore that way over time, and I don't know, it's just a, just a slight style thing that I, I really like. 
Okay, let's glue up. Um, what I'm going to do is just basically put a little glue and drop these panels in. I'm going to tack them initially with my little uh, pin nailer uh, just to make sure everything's set and if the glue starts to dry up I can keep going. But I'm going to follow up immediately with some little 3 quarter inch stainless steel screws. Just enough to make sure that nothing ever lifts anywhere. Now I'm not going to use a tremendous amount of glue here. It will be in the corners and um, just enough because it won't take much there's a lot of surface area but I really don't want any bleeding over and into the inside because even though this is water soluble water wash up glue it is a pain to get it into there and to get it out again make sure it's the right way down yep the damage is on this side These are 5 8 nails, so they won't go through. <laughs> Famous last words. Alright, and a few more just to hold it. And now to get some screws in. Those of you who have been following along know that I now have a Robertson number one drive bit thanks to the sacrifice of a cheap little hardware store screwdriver. Alright. Hey hey. Alright, ready to be put aside. Next thing this will get is a little tongue oil. Yes, yes. No, 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 Peter. Come on, you're getting ahead of yourself. There is one more little vanity piece that's got to go on here. I need a piece of, oh, this might be just perfect once I rip it down. There is, like everything I do, I divide everything into panels. You can't see anything, but right over there, if you remember, in the sort of mission style, uh, arts and crafts style that the boat is sort of heading towards, um, it's... You, you break up any massive panel, any large panel, into vertical panels with a vertical aspect ratio. Um, that is too wide a panel. The idea being is that at one time, you couldn't possibly get a piece of wood that big, right? You had to make it out of wide boards that had panels in between. So that's sort of where the aesthetic comes from, and the eye is naturally used to seeing that, or at least... Mine is. So anyway, um, I have to break up this panel a little bit. I'm going to use that. It's about the right width, inch and a bit. I just have to rip it down to, you know, a quarter or, yeah, somewhere in there so that it's less than that. Okay, now we just got to make it the right length. Alright, perfect, perfect. Just needs a little sanding now. Okay, let's pop this in. I'll have a look at it, see what I think. I think it's awesome. Excellent. Now I'm putting quite a few nails in this, and I'll tell you why. This is going to be the face of the helm, and it's reasonably likely I'm going to kick this over time, because my feet are going to be right here. I don't even know yet what I'm doing about some kind of footrest um, for a helm seat. I think it's going to be integrated into the seat, but you never know. There may be something here eventually that sits here. So I expect this will get kicked up quite a lot over time. But it's mahogany. It'll be varnished. It's sort of what happens to boats. I love it. You probably heard me say that before. Well, hello and welcome to the Beer of the Week aboard Cozy Zephyrus. Um, I'm very grateful to the owner of MV Zephyrus because, as you probably could tell, uh, MV Jordy is not all that comfortable right now with sawdust everywhere. I'm also extra grateful um, because she went out to the beer store and got a beer for the Beer of the Week. This is really interesting. This is from Hoyne Brewery here, and it's called Gratitude. I have to hold it. Well, the focus catches up. Nicely packaged. Uh, there's a nice blurb on the back about how grateful they are to all their customers throughout the year. And um, so their gratitude shows through in a extra strong ale. 9%. Yeah, well, that's gratitude for you. So we'll see what we think of this. See if I can pour a decent beverage. That's looking okay. Nice and dark. I love the color of it. 
See if you can put a little head on the top. That's for you. I'm looking forward to this. It's been a long, dusty day. And there we go. Okay, well, gratitude. Cheers. Cheers. See what we think of that. nice. For a strong beer, you know, that's really yummy. It's not like bold, nasty strong. It's just full. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a bit spicy. That's actually a really nice beer. Goodness. Um, they call it an ale. It's not a pale. It's not an IPA at all. It's not hoppy. It's just rich, spicy. Malty. Malty. Really good. Really good. Mmm. Mm. That's, that's a winner. But, of course, it's a special and won't be available after the holidays. Okay! A little housekeeping. Look at this beautiful Klein screwdriver. This is the um, number zero yellow. Really, really tiny. I want to thank Laura Keeler, who sent me this out off the um, Amazon wish list. Thanks so much, Laura. Now, Laura, I also know uh, you mentioned that you've just bought a wooden folk boat back in Nova Scotia, back in my own stomping ground. So, hopefully we'll see some pictures and maybe a YouTube channel for that. Looking forward to it. Also, want to thank Bass, um, who is a new uh, patron this week. Really grateful to you. Thanks again, Bass, and cheers to both of you. Cheers. All right, so we need a word of the week to win a t shirt. Uh, word of the week this week will be today is the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice. Solstice, not the easiest word going, but I'm sure people will find something to say about it. Solstice is the word of the week, and what that means is, if you'd like to win a Travels with Jordy t-shirt, use the word Solstice in a comment down below, and I'll pick through the first 24 hours of the comments, and you may win a shirt. Hopefully, you will. Happy Winter Solstice. The days are getting longer. Cheers. I cheers a lot. <laughs>